Hello and welcome back to the channel to She Likes Music and today what I'm going to be showing off is some vinyl from a genre that I liked before the hip hop that I've already shown. It was probably the first um, kind of music that I got into uh, so it's about heavy metal today. Um, I initially got the, into metal through listening to things like Nirvana, etc. Just the, probably the most um, normal route to get in there as possible. And since I started collecting vinyl uh, when I was 17, I'm now 22, uh, these, I have amassed somewhat of a collection of heavy metal records. So some of these I don't know much about because they were given to me or or I bought them and I didn't I didn't like them or, or or something like that. So there are a couple of things that I'm just going to skip quickly through. Um, and if any of you have any more information on these albums, then let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, what you guys think. So the first uh, record here, this is all alphabetical, obviously, because um, I've got it all set up alphabetically there. So the first uh, record I've got here is a live album by a blackened death metal band known as Behemoth. Now I used to, I used to like Behemoth to a certain extent. Um, I've always found um, Nergal a little bit cringeworthy, honestly. Uh, his um, his attempt to be satanic is just it's so cringeworthy, like. Um, He's just constantly going on about fucking Jesus and that and how bad Jesus is and how good the devil is and all that. Like, it's just, it's as pathetic as an extremely religious person, in my opinion, obviously. But I, yeah, I, I used to love this shit, but now I, 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 I'm not really into it because it, it's, he's ruined it for me, Nergal ruined it for me. But anyway, this is the, this is what the record looks like. Um, if I open up here, so it's gatefold with the um, obligatory upside down cross, which isn't satanic, that's the St. Peter's cross, but that doesn't matter. Um, and then we have double LP and it's pressed on this, this black vinyl here. And it comes with a booklet um, with extremely, extremely edgy imagery. So we'll start off with them looking really spooky and scary, you know, really, really terrifying. Um, I, d I really don't mind bands that that want to have satanic imagery using it, but um, don't don't think that you're in league with Satan or some shit like that because you're fucking not. You know what I mean? Like you're not like uh, any more interesting than, than the Catholic next to you. You're just not. It's, you're doing the same thing except a different way. Um, you know, believing in Satan is religious no matter what they think and yeah. So there's a couple of albums here that have this satanic imagery. Some of them do it better than others. So I'll show you the ones that I think have uh, used satanic imagery in a way that's not cringeworthy. Because uh, because obviously when heavy metal started, it was in a different time and any sort of picture of the devil would have been shocking and uh, any reference to the devil would have been shocking. So I can appreciate that back then things were different. But like Nergal is doing now where he's still using the Satan, 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 Satan. And there's no substance to it. It's just like Satan will come down and kill everyone and all of the religious people are going to die and, and I don't know I think it's whack but you know I used to I used to love this shit anyway that that was a that was a bit of a rant then we move on to a classic probably the first arguably the first um proper heavy metal band the first proper heavy metal album although I'm sure a couple of people watching this might have May, some metal historians might have a, a better idea of, of what is actually the, the top one but Black Sabbath with their original album Black Sabbath this came out um, I shouldn't have said that because I don't fucking know when it came out uh, I've got a 2015 repress of this album 
if I was to make a guess on when he came out, I'm going to go 1960. <clears throat> yeah, 1960 something. <laughs> I should I should know this, but um, I lo I love this album. This album. Um, to me, it, it wasn't it wasn't the first hit metal album I heard or anything like that. It was um, just one that I kept uh, seeing referenced or whatever. And Black Sabbath were always a band that I had heard of through family and things. So um, when I listen to it, I get I get it. I get why they are considered the start because in this you hear doom metal, you hear I mean you hear blues as well. So that. You hear doom metal, you hear some fucking new wave of British, you hear all of this shit, normal heavy metal, all of it is in this, and then it's all drenched in some fucking grim, gravestony, bluesy riffs, and it's just an amazing album, and I don't have to talk about this, because the people who are watching this already know, and know way more than me about this album, so, but um, for me personally, it's a fantastic album, and um, one which, you know, uh, when I started getting into music, I was listening to music that people who were f older would say, oh, you need to listen to this. This is amazing. Uh, and there were certain bands and groups that I just didn't get. And we'll get to that eventually. But Black Sabbath wasn't one of them. They hit straight away for me. And I understand why they were so big and uh, why Ozzy was so important even, uh, you know, for these albums. I don't think Dio could have could have managed this. Uh, let me skip that. And then the next one, I have two more. So I'm going to quickly skim over these ones. Um, let's have it, let's have it. Okay, I don't know where it is, but I have two more LPs by Black Sabbath. I, I need to reorganise my vinyl. But I have this, which is another Sanctuary Records repress of Paranoid. Uh, I'm not going to pull it out, you. It's just pressed on black vinyl. And um, this is another classic album. Um, perhaps with the more radio-friendly songs on it. Um, or, or more recognisable songs on it. And um, again, I don't need to talk about this. You all know, you all know. And the other record that I have, which I can't seem to find, I have an older pressing of Sabotage. It's, it's quite um, worn away, but the disc is, is in great condition. So yeah, Black Sabbath in general, I, amazing, obviously. I don't need to talk about them. And I've just spent eight minutes fucking doing it. Then we've got a double header by a band, and we're gonna get these guys out the way very quickly because I let I um I do like this band but uh they're pretty generic I guess um this is Blood Incantation this is uh Interdimensional Extinction which is um came out in 2015 this is a 2021 replay repress of that that's what the back looks like it's just pressed on black vinyl um, so yeah and then the other one is Star Spawner which is my personal favourite by them now uh, to describe this kind of music it's very um, uh, it's atmospherically aggressive uh, yeah that's fucking that's a great way of describing it it is atmospherically aggressive so it's not it's not fucking Cannibal Corpse but it's it's aggressive, yeah, yeah. Go listen to it if you're interested. Then we've got um, a band or an artist, whichever you consider them to be, uh, which are probably are quite controversial, but I, I always separate art from artist. Um, I used to love listening to black metal. Now I don't really listen to it, so it's been sitting in, in my shelves for quite a while. But I have two records by Burzum by Varg Vikernes, who is the infamous musician who burned churches and killed Euronymous. Um, although apparently that's quite controversial as well. This is one of the back on black represses of Boozum. This is the first album along with the Ask EP. It's just pressed on black vinyl, it doesn't have anything else with it. 
Um, I found out about I found out about Burzum when I was around again 17, 18. Um, I think it was through some YouTube channel or something, and I just I thought it was. I thought it was crazy and then I found out what he did and all that. I actually have a couple of the Lords of Chaos books and things like that. But um, I love the the soundscape that black metal can make, especially Burzum. But there is, there is a band that I like a little bit better. But this one here is probably the most famous album. This is Philosophum, another back on black repress here. It's just pressed on black vinyl as well. This has the his his most famous song, Dunkel Height, which is um uh, yeah, it's a it's a good song. Um Yezu Todd, good song. Again, Varg Vikanis is a is a wanker, an utter, an utter, complete and utter wanker. Uh, I never liked him. I always thought he was that. Um I just don't like people that think that they're dark and he does, so <laughs> you know. Um, then I have two exclusive or like limited records by uh, two by the same band. I bought these back around again when I was 17, 18 years old. And this, uh, I'll start with the earliest press. This is To Serve Man by Cattle Decapitation. Cattle Decapitation are often described as vegan grindcore, so it's like grind music but with um, their. their aim or their message is to promote veganism through exposition of um i don't know human flaw i don't know um i don't really pay attention to that shit because but anyway this is the record here really cool um it looks like a really bad like disease i think it's called i think it's called like um harvest floor vinyl like that's supposed to be the blood splatter from from to serve man um so yeah cattle decapitation are basically their whole concept is um taking things that humans do and reversing it and throwing it back at us so like um you'll see in fact you already saw with that album cover you'll see with this one here especially now this one was limited to 200 copies i don't know what number i have because the sticker was on the cellophane um, but I have one of them. Then we've got the other, the other, which, as I said, you'll be able to tell this this messaging is shining through. The Harvest Floor with one of the edgiest um, covers ever. I, I should really have turned that light off. But one of the edgiest album covers. So humans going into an abattoir instead of animals. It's so deep. It's so deep. <laughs> Number 168 out of 200, and it came, both of those came with posters, but I put the posters up when I was younger and they're all ruined and things, so I don't have them anymore. But this pressing is not nearly as nice as the other one, but still pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, Cattle Decapitation, I'm sure if you're a fan of heavy metal, you've probably heard them in passing or you are a fan of them. Uh, it's grind music, so most people won't like it. Um, I don't. It's not like I sit and listen to it all the time, but sometimes it's it's good fun, you know. Sometimes it's good fun to listen to. So that's that. And then I've got an album by probably my favourite death metal band. Um, yeah, my favourite death metal band, and I'll I'll just show you. This is Cannibal Corpse. This is Tomb of the Mutilated. This is one of the represses for Metal Hammer, or Metal Blade, sorry. Metal Blade Records. This is the German press of it. So it's pressed, I believe, to look exactly like the original. So we've got the lyrics card here and some credits with a photo of the band. And then we've got the Metal Blade sleeve with the, the original labels and it's pressed on black vinyl, as you can see. Uh, Cannibal Corpse. For me, I, f I really love Cannibal Corpse. I saw, I managed to see them actually a few years ago now. Um, I went with my friend to see them in Glasgow uh, for their tour with... Well, they toured with Black Dahlia Murder and another band I can't remember, but um, it was for an album. And I can't remember what that album was. 
Anyway, yeah. So, Tomb of the Mutilated. This is obviously a very graphic album cover. I don't know whether... I, I don't know whether the YouTube are going to fuck me for this, but... Um, yeah, so it doesn't really need described. This is... I'm going to put this here. <laughs> so, yeah, Cannibal Corpse. It's got some, you know, great tracks on it. If you're into any sort of death metal or you're trying to find a heavier version of metal, I'd definitely suggest go and listen to them. They even appeared in a Jim Carrey movie, you know, what's not to like. Um, this band though, I am Corpse Grinder era and not fucking Barnes. Because, uh, yeah, Barnes, Chris Barnes, uh, I didn't like. Although it, I'm pretty sure that's him on this. I, I do understand that, I do understand it's him on this. But, um, yeah, just not a big fan of, of his um, low ends and things like that. I think, I think he was better. Corpse Grind is better. Absolutely, because no one listens to Six Feet Under, do they? So, that tells it all. Then we have three albums from my favourite, as I said, mentioned before. I have a favourite, four albums, sorry. A favourite black metal band. Uh, they're Norwegian and they actually didn't do anything illegal or fucking horrible or obscene and they're my they're my favorites honestly and this is dark throne dark throne from norway i've got four of their records here so i'll show them off so for a start i have the unholy trinity which um is the first album mean transylvanian hunger not this isn't in any particular order but so these are all peaceful represses from it doesn't say but this album originally came out in 94 transylvanian hunger and it's all of it is pressed on black vinyl but you get these wee inserts here and you get some lyrics as well transylvanian hunger is my personal favorite or, no it's actually it's my second favorite dark throne album and probably the most popular one um, it has some great songs. If you've if you've never listened to it, um, they're all in fucking Norwegian. All of the names apart from Transylvanian Hunger. So just listen to it. I'm not gonna read that shit out because, yeah, I'm not reading that. Dark Throne, Fenris, Zephyrus, and uh, ne not Necro Butcher. Uh, Fenris, Zephyrus, and how can I forget his name? He's the guy, not Torno Culto. So Zephyrus obviously, Zephyrus left after like some of the early albums. So it's only not Torno Culto and Fenris left. Um, Fenris being obviously my favourite member. Then we've got another big album by then. This is A Blaze in the Northern Sky, which is another part of the Unholy Trinity. And I'll just pull this out so I can show you here. Fenris, Zephyrus and Torno Culto. And this is this in Transylvania Hunger is probably equally as popular. Um, and if you haven't listened to them, listen to the song of Blaze in the Northern Sky and In the Shadow of the Horns. Some great primitive primitive drumming, slow caveman riffs and, and all that. It's just fucking it's sick. It's the type of shit that makes your face go you know? Like that. And then next we have Under a Funeral Moon, which out of the three is probably my least favourite, um, but still a cool album, and still glad I've got it. Again, these are all these peaceful represses that came out a few years ago, and it just comes with this insert here, and it's pressed on black vinyl. Uh, yeah, so this one I don't I don't like as much. There's some strange songs, like the first song is it Catherian Life Code? Oh no. Natasha and Eternal Sleep is a strange song. They do something with the vocals there and it's it's different. And it also comes with this like card insert of pretty much what's going on. So yeah, uh, this one is a little different. I think probably the weakest out of the three. Um, but I still listen to it sometimes. Uh, Summer of the Diabolical Holocaust. That, I, I like that song. That's a good song. Um... So yeah, we'll move on to the final Dark Throne album. I'm trying to get through these quickly, you know, because 
There's, there's a lot of them and we're at the 20 minute mark already. So next, Panzerfaust, Panzer, Panzerfaust, Panzerfaust, whatever it's called. This is my favourite Dark Throne album. This is the, uh, for me anyway, I don't want to misappropriate genres, but this is um, my favourite atmospheric black metal album. And I think this is their best. Um, from the first song, in Vida of Sorg, to Quintessence, the sixth song, they, that run of songs from from that to that, incredible. It's just, uh, it's all kind of flows into one song, I guess. It all sounds very similar, like most black metal. Uh, but yeah, I, if you were going to listen to Dark Throne, and you wanted to hear the black metal era, then I would say go listen to some Panzerfaust and see what you think of that. It's pressed on this grey vinyl. There are some like wee black dots, but yeah, the camera won't be able to pick that up. So yeah, Dark Throne, my favourite black metal band out of uh, any of the ones I listen to. I used to be really, really into that, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, they were always the band that I kept going back to and also um, Fenris is, is a very likeable character, um, a very nice guy um, who seems humble and things like that so I watched videos with him and I just got into them through that way, through suggestion I guess. And then the next, the next few records, I'm not really... In fact, no, actually, no, two of these I do. So the, the first one here, I am made in Number of the Beast, obviously, classic, have to have it. This is actually, unfortunately, the only Maiden I own, um, but that will change. This is very glossy, as you can see, it's um, one of the represses from Parlophone Records, and the repress is from 2014. It's a single-sleeved one with uh, just the uh, black vinyl as well, as you can see. But yeah, again, this is another album, just like the first Sabbath album. I don't have to explain anything here. This is the number of the beast. You all know it. You all know Hello Be, Be Thy Name and fucking Acacia Avenue and all of that. Number of the beast, etc. I don't, I don't need to go into this. But this album is very, very good. Um, despite the fact I don't really love operatic um, vocals in metal, this is... This is some good shit. Some good shit. Then we've got some more operatic metal, I guess. Or I, I could reach operatic. Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance. Now, this is actually an original UK press um, of this vinyl, of this album, which is amazing. It's, it's actually amazing that did it's in good, this good condition and I got it for cheap. It's not worth a lot of money, but... I'm just happy I have it like as if it came out the other day, you know, it's pretty cool. It's pressed on this black vinyl here with the CBS label um, and as you can, you can definitely tell that it's original because it's showing you all of the other vinyl that you can buy, so it's obviously a promotion from the label. But yeah, another band that I don't need to fucking metal explain to you, it's um, amazing. Uh, constant i mean the thing for me with judas priest is always the drumming it's always the drumming uh obviously you've got rob halford's incredible vocals but um just the way that guy plays i don't even know what his name is i'm, I'm not going to pretend that i know judas priest like that but amazing i listen to it quite often and i'm never disappointed so yes judas priest next we have another instance of behemoth this is an other um, band where they've spent their entire time, I think they've been about since the 80s, but they've spent their entire career moaning about Jesus and talking about how good Satan is, okay? And wait for it, this could be one of 40,000 bands, but it's not. This is Creator, and this is one of their more recent albums. This was when I first started liking heavy metal. I was just flicking through vinyl and I saw that and I picked it up based on the album cover which I thought looked pretty cool. So this album is called Gods of Violence. So as you can tell, you know exactly what it's going to be about. In fact, you could probably name half of uh, these bands' albums 
gods of violence. You just might as well put God is bad or devil is good. That's that's what most of these bands do. But um, this one is especially bad for me. I I I really dislike this. Obviously, a a band which um, originated decades ago aren't going to exactly going to release something revolutionary. Um, but this was so unremarkable when I heard it that I have not listened to it since. So if there's anyone that wants creators gods of violence on vinyl that would that would appreciate it more than me, then let me know in the comments. I I have it here. Um, it was pressed on Nuclear Blast. It's pressed on Double LP Black Vinyl. Um, yeah, the all the songs to me meld together. They just it's just so unremarkable. It's almost offensive. But um, I guess I guess if you slap some some um, cow skulls and fucking goats and and upside down crosses, then there will be some some guy that that buys it um, to show to his girlfriend who doesn't give a fuck, you know. And then <laughs> then we have a couple more satanic people, satanic. Um, however, this this band's uh, probably a little bit more authentic with it. Uh, uh, probably, probably a bit more authentic with it. This is Mayhem, and I have a couple of their live albums, um, which sound like dog shit, by the way. Obviously, it's Mayhem, but um, yeah, this is live in Leipzig, which is their most notable live album. This the the original of that came out quite a while ago. Um, all of these are just pressed on black vinyl, but they do come with little booklets um, for each gig, showing you different different photos from that gig, etc. Some some notes and some interviews and things. Then I have Mayhem's live in Zeitz, which is in East Germany, and this is a, a concert from the nineties. And and again inside that is a booklet with photos of the band in Zeitz uh, playing etc. Then we have live in Jessheim, which is them live in Norway in 1990. So as you can see, um, I have yeah they are they are the live albums. They're all represses. They're not originals. Um, but these are actually really cool. Um, I listen to them sometimes, but again, the audio, the audio quality for live. I mean, Mayhem Live already. If you went in the flesh to see Mayhem Live, it would sound like a fucking hoover falling down a sink. But live and then recorded live onto the wax, imagine what that sounds like. It's a hoover falling down a sink um, into a static TV. But... That is what, that's that shit I love. That's that shit I'm trying to find. So, Mayhem. Obviously, I could make a three hour video on Mayhem and, and all of their shit. But that, maybe one day, maybe one day. Mayhem. That was Mayhem. Skimming through this quickly, we've got another record that I, I unremarkable for me. I bought it um, again when I was sort of flicking through metal and just it just interested me. This is uh, some sort of, they're called Memorium. The album's called For The Fallen. And it's some sort of heavy metal super group. But for you to be a super group, I feel like um, you have to know the people that are in it for it to be super. But again, I don't, just cause I don't know them doesn't mean they're big. I'm just, I'm just taking a piss. That's a photo of them. So there's probably four guys that are massive uh, figures in metal and I'm just taking the piss out of them but uh, yeah I really know nothing about this I, again it was just sort of middle of the road not too heavy not too light metal it was conveyor belt stuff it was just blech, you know again if someone wants this it's here it's here Um. So skipping through, skipping through, we're at the half hour mark, we've only got a couple of records left, so I can skim through these. Next band uh, is my, probably my favourite heavy metal band, even though they fell off after like three albums and whatever, whatever, I don't care about that. This is Metallica, 
Um, and I have three records by Metallica, not as many as I'd like to have, um, but I'll show you what I've got right now. So this is the $5.98 EP, which is the Garage Day Revisited or the Sessions or whatever, where it's just some unreleased songs, which sound pretty good actually, it's pretty thrashy as well. Um, and that's what the back looks like. It's just pressed on black vinyl, so I'm not going to pull it out. Yeah, it's Metallica. You know what Metallica sounds like. Then I've got the Black Album uh, from 1991. Uh, again, this is pressed on double black vinyl, nothing on it. But this album is um, it's a really good album for me. Uh, uh, it's divisive for people that lo that love Metallica, but for me, I, I love this shit. It's got Sabbath through on it, the God that the God that failed, don't tread in me, the Unforgiven. Obviously, you've got the hits, Enter Sandman, nothing else, nothing else matters. My friend of Misery is another great song, but yeah, this is this is probably the last great Metallica album for me, anyway, uh, personally. That's how I feel. And then. We are on to the last ones, thank god. On to the last ones. Uh, I have a copy of Ride the Lightning on vinyl as well, which is my my favourite Metallica album, it's Ride the Lightning, um, by far. And um, I had that, but it's I, I'm a friend actually borrowed it, so I don't have it at hand. Um, but yeah, Ride the Lightning is my favourite and, in my opinion, the best Metallica album there is. Uh, and it's in my top 10 albums of all time, probably. So, just just to provide some context. Then we have something when I started collecting vinyl and family found out that I liked Metallica, they just bought a Metallica album for me. So, uh, when I first got my record, when I turned 17, which was in 2016, this album came out pretty much on the day of my birthday. And this is Metallica's Hardwired, Hardwired to Self-Destruct, which is their latest release um, from 2016. And it's actually better than Death Magnetic, Load, Reload, all of that shit. I, in my opinion, anyway. Two absolute standout songs. The title track Hardwired and then the song, um, <laughs> oh shit, Spit Out The Bone, <laughs> ah, I can't believe that, Spit Out The Bone, yeah, so um, I think Moth To The Flame as well, Moth Into The Flame, Hardwired and Spit Out The Bone are very, are little nostalgic moments for the thrash that once was in Metallica and maybe will return because they're going to release another album. But uh, definitely, Spirit of the Bone is a return to what they once were. Somewhat, somewhat. Maybe a bit of a tribute act, but you know, isn't every band, isn't every heavy metal band now a tribute act? Pretty much. Uh, then we have, so we have two left, uh, two records left of my collection. This is Nails, and this album is called You Will Never Be One of Us. Um, Again, at the time, I never really know, knew what I was buying. I'd heard of Nails before. I'd listened to one of their previous albums before this. This isn't an album. I, oh, it is an album. I thought it was an EP. This is uh, a 2016 release on Nuclear Blast. And it's it's really quite an interesting album. Um, I really like the sounds on it. And it's very dark. It's very aggressive. Um a lot of bands attempt to be aggressive, but usually fall short of that mark because they're trying. But this dude, whatever his name is, is able to is able to emulate emulate that perfectly. And then finally, we have an album that for all of you old heavy metal heads out there, you're going to not like. And this album, I don't particularly like either. But again, when I was younger at the time, this album came out. Um, and I liked this band at the time. So I have Slipknot's The Grey Chapter, which is the album which came out after the death of Paul Grey, the bassist, who was one of the integral members of the band. Yeah, so this album is it has a couple of songs I actually really like on it, like Kill Pop, I really love that. Um, Lek, uh, the one that kills the least, and obviously The Devil and I is there as well. But not an album that I would uh, die on a hill for. It's not. It's not great. Um, however, with Slipknot, 
I think their first album is is amazing. I, I love that shit. I love the the DJing and the the rap, like metal rapping or whatever it's called, whatever it is. I love that shit. But this this album, yeah, it came out at the time I saw it and I bought it, and I, I used to listen to this all the time. I haven't listened to it in a while. But um, if you wanted to check out any song from this, I'd say listen to Kill Pop, I guess, or The Devil and I, you know. But really, not 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 amazing, not amazing. Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> my Metallica's right here. Read the lightning. Yes, as I said, my favourite Metallica. Again, black vinyl, all normal. Then to talk to. To finish it off, we're going to go with a bit of stoner shit, and this is Sleep's Holy Mountain. Sleep's Holy Mountain, uh, and that's what the back looks like. This is an Eric repress. I've listened to this a couple of times. Um, it's it's tough. It's tough to listen to for me anyway. It's very very um, chamber oriented and like repetitive riffs and all that, which is cool, but. Um, yeah, I haven't listened to this shit in a while, but that is the final record of my metal collection. Next, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll have to show off rock in general, I guess, because I have so much fucking vinyl that falls under that category. I might have to go into smaller videos, but this video is 36 minutes long. So if you have made it to this point um, in the video and you're still here listening, then f thank you, man. Thank you. That's incredible. Uh, if you could leave a like or just leave a comment. I just want, I want to talk to people, engage with people, see what they think. See how wrong I am with, with all of my metal facts. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later.